All right, guys, welcome back. This is Yankees Unloaded. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. He is Gary Sheffield Jr. And today we are coming at you after the Yankees beat one of the best teams. Actually, I'll say the best team in baseball right now, the Philadelphia Phillies on their home turf, 14 to four. It was a damn hit parade tonight. I mean, Gary, uh, one of the more fun games of the year. I feel like I don't want to be, you know, all about, you know, hyperbole and all that. And I feel like hyperbolic and all that, whatever, because I feel like it's like, oh, this is the worst loss of the year because it just keeps happening, right? Well, I'm not going to say this is the best win of the year, but I feel like it might be the most impactful. And the reason I say that is because it was against the Phillies. It was on the road and it was, I said they might be turning a corner. They have not won three in a row since June 10th. So yes, I'm sorry. I'm going to celebrate this a little bit. I actually made myself a milkshake afterwards. Cause isn't I, I was, it nice was though that, that we don't have to be carried to the trade deadline. Cause usually the Yankees heading God. into the trade deadline, we're making so many excuses and just begging Brian Cashman to get stuff done. He got <laughs> something done early on in the deadline, which never happens by the way. Never. Yeah. We do something in the 11th hour and it's almost like a lifeline. Well, jazz Chisholm played third base today. Okay. And, That was a huge topic. Everyone wanted to know, was he going to be playing second base? Was Glaber Torres going to be moving over to third? And you've got to give Brian Cashman credit at the very least for getting this deal done when he got it done. Because this team isn't, they don't even look similar to the organization that they looked like before Chisholm got here. And that's just with the addition of him. And then you enter in today, just adding two bats and Giancarlo Stanton and Jazz Chisholm, the team looks completely different. You're talking about seeing Ben Rice hitting eighth. You're talking about Anthony Volpe, your nine hitter. Okay, so there is no pressure on these two players to perform. When you talk about Ben Rice being four for his last 55, yeah, that's troublesome when you have him hitting fourth in leadoff. But what about when you're hitting eighth for this team? The expectations of you are not even similar. So long behold, we put them in this position we're now finally getting an output. Alex Verdugo, Alex Verdugo was thrown in the leadoff spot, I think in large part because we were playing Boston. And of course, like he always does, he performed against Boston. And now it seems like we're actually getting somewhat of production out of Verdugo, which by the way, Jake, we only need it for like another two weeks. Max, yeah. right? Because Jason Dominguez, at least right now, he's entering into his rehab assignment. We should call it a rehab assignment, not AAA. This is a yeah. big leaguer. Jason Dominguez shouldn't be that far away. So when Jason Dominguez enters into this lineup and the Yankees are one of, I believe, three teams that are left on Yandy Diaz, you add his bat to this lineup and Jason Dominguez, our lineup goes from lethargic and just boring, flat out boring, to one of the best lineups in the division. And you can actually make the argument that we're maybe one more pitcher away from actually running away with this thing. So a um, lot of baseball to be played. We have no idea what's going to happen. Nothing could happen. But Jake, I'm hopeful for the next 24 hours that Brian Cashman has to get something done. No, I absolutely agree with you, Gary. Um, you know, with this game, I mean, we talked about on this show till we were blue in the face with Jazz Chisholm. You got to add this bat. You have to add his athleticism. You have to add his spark. This guy plays the game differently. And you know what? It's a breath of fresh air. I'll tell you that right now. Watching him hustle, watching him be able to, you know, run out a bunt or, you know, the plays he was able to make at third. It was such a, I mean, the encapsulation of last night. We talked about it when Glaber was asked straight up, you know, about third playing third. And he said, I'm a second baseman. The guy who had just joined the team that day saying, I'll play anywhere the team needs me, essentially. He's like, I just started playing center field last year, right? We saw today Jazz Chisholm, for the first time in his playing career, play the hot corner. It's called the hot corner for a reason. You are going to get, sometimes, you know, a left-handed batter will hit it over the third base side. But you're going to get those right-handed pulls, where that thing is going 100 miles an hour off the bat. Oh, they're rockets. Yeah, 100%. I played there, uh, obviously, in like Babe Ruth and whatnot, not in the major leagues. And yeah, it is. It's the hot corner for a reason. Okay. Yeah, that was the position you didn't want to be playing when my dad was hitting. 
Um, no. I actually oh remember God, like no. the third base coach <laughs> would just be standing. I don't know if people remember this and maybe they do, but the third base coach was just nowhere near the coach's box. I always loved that. That was actually my favorite part of my dad's career. But regardless, back to the point here is that Jazz Chisholm is exactly what Glaber Torres and DJ LeMayo, LeMayo aren't. He's exactly that. Think about it. Everyone was complaining, Jake. Oh, it's just not athletic enough. Oh, there's just not enough hustle. Where's the heart? Where's oh the spirit to be a I Yankee? Know. Everyone told that to me. And you know what, Jake? It was accurate. They were on, right over the target. It's exactly right. So when you bring in a player, it's not about just being a star, okay? Because if the Yankees have to go trade for stars to go win a title, well, we just traded for one in Juan Soto. We have two stars, really two great players. The rest are just kind of, they're good. Austin Wells is now an emerging player on this team, but you wouldn't consider anybody else to be a great player. But teams that win World Series, how many great players were on those San Francisco Giants team? They won three titles in the early 2010s. How many great players did they have? They had a couple, yeah. a couple great players, but a lot of role players, a lot of guys who could do a job. When you talk about Jazz Chisholm, everyone was saying, well, we need more guys to do the little things. Jess Chisholm was dropping down a bunt today. If it was fair, it was a single. He hit two homers today. So we don't need Jazz Chisholm to do that. That's no. just a bonus. That's just what his ceiling is. We need Jazz Chisholm to be league average offensively. Defensively, he's versatile. His mentality is versatile. I'll play third base. I don't care. I just wanted to be a Yankee since I was a kid. He told that to us. Yeah. So that passion is something that we should praise in itself. Because my expectation is between now and the end of the year, I'm getting the best version of Jazz Chisholm. Now, Glaber Torres, on the other hand, I can't exactly say that. I haven't seen something. Yes, he's hit a lot better of late, but what this team needs is a player who brings more energy, brings more fire to the team. And this Yankees team, at least at the deadline, shouldn't be done because you need to use this as momentum. This day is not the answer. This is not the holy grail for the Yankees. That was not our World Series. We need to no. use this as positive momentum and ride that momentum past the deadline and outrun Baltimore. That's the job. No, absolutely agree there. I think really, you know, it's really funny because if you talk to somebody long enough, they'll contradict themselves. And the reason I bring that up is because with Derek Jeter, right? Everyone talks about Derek Jeter being essentially the gold standard of a major league baseball player, right? And Derek Jeter has sworn by Jazz Chisholm, so much so, he he basically talked to the Yankees, and they're like, hey, what do you think about Jazz? And he said, go and get him. Like, this is a guy that, you know, the captain, okay? the One of the greatest Yankees of all time was like, go out and get this guy. And you know what? I told you this, uh, you know, off air. I think I told you on air, but I can't even remember if it was on air or off air. But I want to put it out there. I think Jazz Chisholm is going to be a star in the Bronx. I really believe that. Oh, you do? I, I, I 100% okay. believe it. Because here's the thing about Jazz, okay? It's exactly what Jim Bowden was saying on our show. He has not been around guys like Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. I really think that's all he needs. He looks so much better already. and he Because he looks so much more confident. And he looks so much more comfortable. I mean... Not every clubhouse allows you to just, you know, integrate into there. And you see this. I mean, he's using Aaron Judge's bat today twice, hit a home run, smiling for the camera. I mean, this guy is having the time. Of he's not life. afraid he's at the very least. Days. He's been there for two days. And yeah. again, it's early. But I, I think the Yankees, this was a deal that Brian Cashman has done before in a sense, okay? He went out and got Harrison Bader, right? Bader was under two years of control. Kind of a, the thought process there is that he could, you know, add a spark, right? Different because Harrison Bader was more of a flashier player in a sense. He would make those diving catches. He was a great defensive center fielder. And now you're like, oh, we're good at center field for like, you know, the next two years and maybe we'll re-sign him. I actually think Jazz is going to push the Yankees to the point where when they made this deal, they're thinking just now and two years, right? I think he's going to push them to actually have him around a lot longer. I think there's a real shot. So I can't. I think there's a shot. Yeah. I can't commit to it just because my mentality right now, and perhaps there are other people who are on this boat with me, mm -hmm. I don't care what happens next year. I'm not even looking at it. And no, I understand I that. that that may be like, 
people are saying, well, that's part of the job. That's part of Brian Cashman's job. He needs to think about these things. Not only who's going to help us win a World Series this year, but who's going to be on next year's team. Obviously, you've got Dominguez. You've got maybe Verdugo's out the picture now, right? So all these yeah. moving parts. But I don't even care with Jazz Chisholm. All the control, that's all a bonus. But Jazz Chisholm has to provide what he's great at. And I understand when people look at his batting average, his career average, you see his ops, right? You see his on-base percentage. And you'd say, I don't feel like this is the player that they projected him to be. And I would agree with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. But another thing that I would tell people is if you watch Jazz Chisholm play baseball, what he excels at is what the Yankees fail at. The Yankees happen to be a team that's a station to station baseball club. They will not beat you on the base pass. They will not go first or third on a hit. They will not score on a pass ball. They're not looking to drop down a bunt. They're not that's not the type of personnel that they have underway. So when people say, "Why do the Yankees always play this way?" Well, that's the personnel that we have. That's yep. what we have in the room. And Brian Cashman went out and got a player who objectively is not a great player. More than likely, he never will be in my book, but he doesn't have to be great. He needs to be great in his role. And his role is to hit somewhere in the middle of the lineup. And as guys get healthy, Dominguez gets called up. Perhaps you can slide Jess Chisholm even further down that lineup. And you can have real expectations every single night of this Yankees team to score. Now, the last piece to the puzzle after completing this deadline is do we have the arms to get through October? That's another question mark. We don't know, right? We've got Nestor Cortez, Schmidt. Is Nestor going to be traded? We've heard that rumor. Um, is Flaherty going to come through the door? Or is he going to Baltimore? Plenty of stuff can still happen. Tanner Scott can come through the door. So this Yankees team is not a complete team. So we need to not judge them on who they are today. We need to really take a hard look at this team tomorrow. No, and I agree with that. I do think, though, when I look at Jazz Chisholm, and you know, everyone loves, we live in a world where everything needs to be compared, right? There's always comparisons. I mean, I gave you the comparison with Ben Rice. I still, like, I watch him and I'm like, that's Brandon Belt right there. I really believe he's going to end up being that guy. Um, with Jazz, I think he could be kind of a cross between Jose Reyes and a little bit of Lindor. That's kind of what I see. Um, and, and I think the power, and I, I told you this before they got him. I'm like, he's got 30 plus home run potential. I mean, he really, he could hit 30 this year. Unlikely, very unlikely. He's got 15 already though. So I think Yankee Stadium is going to be big for him, um, especially with that short porch. And I mean, I just think when you look at his stolen bases and just the athleticism and just, I mean, how many players can you just take and throw at third base and get what you got today out of him? He saved a, an obvious double. And by the way, he could have gotten that guy out if that umpire wasn't in the effing way. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, that was that? weird. That was just a weird play. I, I, I didn't like, know what happened. I let it go just because of the yeah, situation and exactly. just kind of how things were going. But yeah. of course, it would have been more frustrating. Same with Glaber Torres defensively today. I mean, he was just an abomination. And and I let it go. Well, just the, based on the, the score interference, of the game. though. <laughs> Can you believe I was on Twitter telling people, and this is before you sent me the picture of how much time Glaber Torres it's had to close. field and throw this baseball. And and then also he booted a ball later in the game, which oh. you just can't make it up. Okay. You just the, can't make it up. Yeah. The, the claws, he was trying to gra like claw at it. On the he ground. looked like he was taking a pizza out the oven. It wasn't baseball. <laughs> it wasn't baseball. And it, it was, it's frustrating because yeah. I'm fully aware. Like, think about this. We podcast every single day for this team. I know Glaber Torres' job isn't to be a great defensive second baseman. I, I mean, I know this. Yeah. But what we need is just serviceable. We need you on balls to you. You need to make the routine play. You need to make the routine throws. Occasionally, you can make a great play, but it's not our expectation. You need a hit. Well, Glaber Torres is hitting 240. Okay. He's hitting pretty well of late. We talked about him in the Boston series. He was really good offensively, but you can't be an abomination defensively anywhere. No. You God, can't no. be hidden on a World Series team and be one of, if not the worst defensive player at your position. And then tell your manager, I'm a second baseman. Are you? I also would like to claim myself as a second baseman. I know we don't need any data to prove that I'm good at it. I can just say that. I can just make these type of statements. Well, everybody in our comment section is also a second baseman. Okay? That's where we are. So, base. 
So we are, I, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> we are in a position now where Brian Cashman has a choice and we have asked these questions. We, we asked Bob Nightingale, we asked John Morosi, is there any chance that Glaber Torres is traded? And some of them left that door open for him and Nestor Cortez. Now, does Brian Cashman have the cojones to actually go out there and trade Glaber Torres? I don't know because Glaber Torres is a player. He's an X factor. He's a player the past two years. If you told me we're getting 2023 Glaber Torres the rest of this year, 2022 Glaber Torres the rest of the year, he can absolutely help us win a World Series. The problem 100%. is that his floor is incredibly low. His floor is a low energy, low offensive output. He's just an, a bad defensive player. He's bad at everything when it's going bad. Okay. And it looks like he's in his head. And I understand he's in a contract year. So I just personally don't see Brian Cashman having the, uh, the, you know, what's to trade him, but the onions, the onions thank you. The basketballs. I, I just, I don't see that happening. I just haven't seen those type of moves from Brian Cashman. I've given him credit about what he's done with Chisholm and obviously what he did with Holmes with Pittsburgh. I've given him credit before. I just can't picture this. So it's an interesting situation. I know for a fact people are tired of watching him play. Um, we're not going to spend the whole show talking about him because everybody else today was excellent. Um, I loved, I actually really liked Giancarlo Stan's at bats today, despite him not taking it at bat yeah. in a month. So, and he faced Zach Wheeler today. So, tough assignment for your first day out there, oh but God. even having them up there was a major presence. Even when he doesn't have it, he has it. Like, I mean, just the movement on his pitches, are it's just disgusting. Like, I'm sitting there watching, and, you know, my roommate's like, why, why, why'd Juan Oh, Soto? and Zach Wheeler? Yeah, he's like, why did Juan Soto just, like, look at that? Oh, it's he threw it at his chest, like, and it was a sinker that moved three feet. That's why. Exactly. It's like, you yeah. can't even, yeah, it's it's crazy. Good stuff today, though. Luis Heel gets his 11th one of the year. Um, wanted to mention Severino apparently helped him out with his slider. That was cool to hear. Uh, Luis helping out Luis. So, um, wait, Luis Severino helped him. Oh, you didn't know that? No, this brother is a double agent. He's still working for the Yankees. Yeah, I just found this out. So, so Luis wow. Heel and Luis Severino were going back and forth, like I think with either FaceTime or like video or whatever. And uh, yeah, Severino, if you've noticed why Heel's throwing the slider, they pointed mm -hmm. this out apparently three before the third three games ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, Severino apparently worked on it with him, like over wow. text. And he's like now able to throw this slider. Can he text Glaber Torres on how to field a ground ball? <laughs> I, I knew that was coming. I'll so, tell yeah. you this. That I mean, that's incredible. And it, it makes me sad because I know. Luis Severino was just, he was such a, he loved being a Yankee. And that's what we like. I mean, it's kind of like the Philadelphia Phillies. I actually really respect this organization. I don't know how other yeah. people feel, but there are certain Mars players. To get rid of that, like everything <laughs> right like john crock back in the day like there are certain jason worth certain players that just want to be phillies right bryce harper there are certain guys that you just can tell they just understand how to be a yankee we've yeah. got it luis severino in my opinion seemed like he understood how to be a yankee he just couldn't stay healthy man that was just sad what's even sadder gary is i was at the downfall uh, of him uh, i was at that Reds game when he gave oh, up no. home run after home run after home. I was right by where he gave up those three home runs back. To it was back just to an back. undressing. I was just like, what is happening? And then that's when we realized, you know, he had an injury and it, it just, yep. the problem is if he had, he just had too many injuries, but looking at who's currently on the roster, I got to tell you something. I really like today that he'll give them five and a third. The offense picks up the slack. Michael K brought this up on, on the broadcast today. This bullpen was fried. OK, to go up against the Philadelphia Phillies going into this game, Gary, I chalked this up as a loss because I thought he was going to probably throw seven, eight innings of like four hit ball. And we weren't going to have anybody to come in and be able to, to close it out if that was even the case. I also didn't think they'd be able to hit Wheeler. Uh, boy, was I wrong. They probably ruined Wheeler's chance of winning the Cy Young today, if we're being honest. Now Skeens is so going to win. Yeah, Skeens is essentially. You just had a hundred. I should. Strikeouts. I don't even know why I use the word essentially. He's the best pitcher in baseball by a he country is. mile. He's. It's insane. just a matter of how long he's been here. So that's essentially the whole case. He's the best pitcher in the league. So based on today, it gives. It actually opens the door. Skeens has a chance to win the Cy Young, and I wouldn't be pissed about it. 
No, I think it'd be good for baseball to see a rookie win the Cy Young. I, I just, that's my first thought. Um, wanted to throw something out there for you. We've talked about the, I forget the exact word usage or, or the acronym, but we've talked about this before. The Diamondbacks got a compensatory pick awarded for having a rookie in uh, Corbin Carroll. Okay. That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. And the, the mm-hmm. uh, Orioles got one for Gunnar Henderson last year. You know who actually has an outside shot, who is in the top 100 prospects, has an outside shot of getting the Yankees a first round pick? Because Heel was not in the top 100. But you know who was? Hold on a second here. Chat probably knows, but I figured I'd let you figure that out. No, I have no idea who. Austin Wait, hold on. Oh, okay, I wasn't going to say that. Really? If Austin Wells wins Rookie of the Year this year, and he didn't play enough last year to qualify, so he is. Oh, still I thought he did play enough. Yes, last year. No, apparently he did not. I would. Really? I just actually looked that up. So he's considered a rookie this year. Wow. So okay, well, so I didn't know that at all. So if Austin Wells wins Rookie of the Year, he was in the top 100. So the Yankees would get a first round pick. Oh, he only played 19 games last year. See, for some yeah. reason, I just thought that he played more last year. I'm not sure why. It, it was well, probably because it was just a black hole of a year. And I was did just... the same thing with Jason Dominguez. He's only oh. had like 31 at bats. <laughs> yeah, we're like, he's an established big leaguer. He's literally been here for, for see, 14 minutes. See, we see the comments, folks. We see him. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. had to he, mention that. Jason Dominguez has been here for like 12 minutes. And we're like, he's an established big leaguer. He's not a, he's not a prospect. It's like, I guess technically. Home- Runs. He didn't even. Yeah, have I guess technically, <laughs> Jason Dominguez is still a prospect. He wasn't yeah, up there very long, it, so I get still, it. I don't know. Because so mean, wait, he, so what exactly has to happen for Austin Wells? What does he have to do for this? He just pick? needs to get Rookie of the Year. Oh, you have to literally win Rookie of the Year. Yeah. So if he wins Rookie of the Year, he gets it. So actually, the Yankees could get screwed by their own Yankee if Luis Heel wins Rookie of the Year, which I think he could be the favorite there. Okay. Um, they wouldn't get a first round pick because he wasn't in the top 100. How dumb is that? That just seems like a dumb rule. <laughs> it's really stupid. I, I don't know. But um, either way, Austin Wells, we appreciate you. The way you're, he's got a 342 on base percentage now. I mean, in, in reality, he should probably be leading off if I'm being honest, but I like him in the cleanup role. Um, by the way, Ben Rice isn't that far off from being in the 800 OPS area. So I'm willing to to give Ben Rice some time to work this thing out. You know, Ben Rice and Austin Wells are very similar. I think Ben Rice needs to work through the patch. We gave Austin Wells a long leash. I, I was really thinking about this today, right? We gave Austin Wells a long leash on this show, a long leash. And we kept making excuses for him, which the analytics backed up. He was the most unlucky hitter in baseball. Yeah, he and, was hitting the ball consistently hard. And we just kept saying like, okay, eventually it's going to turn around. And it is, right? But he also needed to get consistent playing time. And doing this platoon with someone who isn't as good as him didn't really make a lot of sense. So Ben Rice is actually playing. And they did just move. J.D. Davis is gone. So, yeah, LeMahieu comes in for God knows why in the eighth inning. I don't know how you pinch hit a guy who's hitting 174, has a 266 on base percentage, and a 217 uh, slugging, but that's neither here nor there. My point is, Gary, I think we were too close. Uh, we were too quick to – I don't want to say I was giving up on Rice, but I think we were definitely too quick to be like, he needs to be sent down. There were a lot of guys that were struggling like Rice. And I think really just Rice is going to go through these ebbs and flows. Okay. He started off the three home run game. I think threw him off. I think he was trying to aim, you know, hit swing for the fences. Every I think a lot of people agree with that part. Yeah. And, and I think really right now, um, he's still, you know, he's chasing, he's going to chase. Uh, but if you look as Waldo Cabrera was horrible at the whole chasing out of the zone, he's gotten so much better this year at that. I think this is a, a player that's improving. I think he he's getting better each day. He's learning as he goes. And, you know, the bottom line is he's somebody that I think can contribute in the postseason. He's already come through in the clutch. We saw the Orioles game. That was like a postseason game, Gary. And when we needed a home run, he came through. Now, they blew that game sky high, and I don't even want to talk about it because it was just awful. The vibes around were awful. But... 
Ben Rice came through with that three run home run in the in the clutch. And we've seen multiple times when push comes to shove, Ben Rice has come through. And in addition to that, he's got a good eye. He can walk as well. So well, the numbers I, suggest I that as well. Right it's not necessarily even a prediction. Ben yeah. Rice has essentially fallen off a cliff his last 50 at bats. But if you look at his numbers, he's hitting 209. Okay. This is essentially Anthony Volpe rookie year territory, right? This is a player mm -hmm. who's just not hitting well. But I'll say this his on base percentage is 300. Okay. Yeah. So one, essentially 100 points higher than his batting average. So what he's good at is showing on the field, which is his plate discipline. He and Austin Wells are good at the same things. The difference is, to your point, Austin Wells had a longer leash. It took him more time. And maybe Ben Rice needs more time. I mean, I'm assuming he does. He's a rookie. But I told you, I don't expect to see Ben Rice. Like My expectation versus what can happen are two different things. I don't expect Ben Rice to be this key contributor or doing something in October, I wouldn't put that type of pressure on this kid. I just wouldn't do it, especially when you're the New York Yankees, because all of these guys, they're going to be playing for the Yankees in October. And we're just kind of making the assumption we'll be there. It is stressful to play for the New York Yankees. This is yeah. not easy. There's a reason. Everyone always thinks that the Yankees, they only want to sign players who are 35 years old and just vets and old, right? Old as dirt. But part of the reason for that is that the Yankees are strategically trying to pick players ha who have pedigree that they can trust in October. And sometimes that works uh, to a disadvantage, but I will say sometimes they go with the youth and you might overwhelm them. We overwhelmed Anthony Volpe at leadoff, it seems, right? So there's a lot to unpack here with Ben Rice. We don't have a lot of time to be patient with this kid, unfortunately. So it's Brian Cashman's call. Do you roll with this kid? Do you allow him to go this next two months and play and potentially hover at 200? Or do you punt the opportunity to somebody else like Yandy Diaz or anybody else? Yeah, and that I guess you know that's a good segue into the trade deadline aspect of this because we are trade deadline eve right now. We're recording this right before midnight, which means that will be the trade deadline day. Um, and, and I feel like Yandy Diaz, you and I have both kind of solidified him as kind of the guy we want. Rosario was for a while and he's now a Dodger. So I wasn't crazy for saying this guy and you weren't either for saying this guy had value at the trade deadline and could get moved. Cause a lot of people were like, no, it's only Paredes and a Rosarena and Diaz. And I'm like, well, Rosario got moved today. So um, the Yankees also had a lot of interest in Tommy Edmond who also got moved to the Dodgers. So this is the good that I'll take away from this. Because I think Edmund, I people disagree. I already saw it all over Twitter. Yankee fans did not want Edmund. Same reason you didn't, Gary. He doesn't have the greatest bat. I get that. I think having a guy that can play all those positions in October is valuable. Now, he would have been expensive too, to be fair. But I liked him for essentially this year. And so seeing him go to the Dodgers actually kind of was, it was bittersweet because I liked his fit for, you know, the Yankees. Did it feel validating? But no, not even that. Um, not even that. No, uh, the Dodgers, I feel like, are out of contention to get a Diaz. They're out of contention. Oh, that's a good to way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. That's how I looked at it. They got two guys. They got. You're not getting another infielder if you went out and got Rosario and you went out and you got Edmund, right? So I, I'm not saying they won't go out and get Crochet or anybody like that. Um, who the Yankees are apparently still in on because Joel Sherman actually mentioned that, which is interesting because he needs a contract extension. So, I mean, is Hal going to pay up? Because if so, I, I think they should do it, if I'm being honest, because you'd have crochet for a long time. It makes a lot of sense. But regardless of that, talking about the bat, which you and I kind of look at, I mean, reliever is important, but having a, a lethal offense can get you out of those bad situations as well. Oh, definitely. So, absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. The no. Yankees, though, in general, you can absolutely say that neither is World Series ready. The Yankees offense needs to get better. Yeah. The actual presence of Jason Dominguez is going to loom large. He has to be healthy and ready to go. He needs to be a contributor. We don't need him to be a star. We need him to be Jason Dominguez, his baseline, which is a very good player in this league. If he's there, 
And then you maybe add a couple role players to where you don't look at the Yankees and say, wow, this team has got no depth. Where's the $300 million go? Well, some of it was injured. And then another part of it was injured and also in the minor leagues in Jason Dominguez. Because people need to remember, Jason Dominguez wasn't on the big league team because Alex Verdugo temporarily was playing well. There's your answer. So that's partially why when so when I, we actually get injured in John Carlos Stanton, it looked like we had no talent left. And that was kind of true. But circumstantially, we kind of played ourselves. Like we really, we really screwed that up, Jake. Like we, let's be honest here. That was just a total mockery of a decision. And frankly, and we're lucky that Dominguez seems to be on his way back and to be a contributor. But there are moves to be made. Like we still need, in my opinion, we need a leadoff hitter. I don't think Jazz Chisholm is necessarily that leadoff hitter I was looking for. I think he can still do the little things. I think he can get on base. All those are really good things. Defensively, he can go anywhere. But I'm looking at Jonathan India and Diaz. One of those two guys, and I after that happens, Jake, we need a we need a bullpen arm, man. We need a bullpen arm. When yeah. Yes Network keeps talking about this bullpen's gassed, this bullpen's gassed, where's Boone going to go? I'm not sure he doesn't like throwing that guy three days in a row. Well, this guy's worked two days in a row. We don't really like working with him. Is he going to go this direction? The Yankees don't have a ton of confidence in terms of their bullpen. And we're talking about Matt Blake is utilizing this bullpen. And he doesn't feel confident. And I know he hasn't said he doesn't. But you're talking about some guys that, frankly, as Yankees fans, I can tell you there are two, three guys in our bullpen right now that you know my cheeks are clenched every time they come out the pen. That is what it is. And when it comes to October baseball, you think I want to throw somebody out there like in another a Roldis Chapman and have a sweat off? I don't. I want to have some type of expe- expectation of what I'm getting out of the bullpen in October. So that way I can just worry about scoring runs. And um, frankly, that's going to come outside the organization. So Brian Cashman, between now and like maybe by the time you're watching this episode, like six or seven hours from now, we need two additions to this organization. This momentum that you just saw last night, fantastic, amazing, but we're still not a World Series winner. We can be if the right moves are made, and Brian Cashman, is he the right guy for the job that you trust to get this across the finish line? I don't know. Um, I shouldn't even say I don't know. I personally don't trust it. I'm in wait and see mode, and when that happens, if he does right by us, I'll give him the credit when it's due. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how they go about the bullpen. They got a lot of guys that could be coming back from, you know, IL before October. Uh, Ian Hamilton, who I I've said on here, I'm convinced his struggles came when he hurt his lat and it went unnoticed and then eventually it became obvious he wasn't the same pitcher. So I think if he comes back and he's healthy, I think he could be a key contributor. Scott Efros, they keep talking about him. I don't hear anything now, so I'm a little concerned by that because this guy gets hurt like crazy. But they were really excited about him. He does exist. He's in the minors. But I was really excited about him because they were getting excited about him. And I'm like, okay, has he really made... Like, And I saw his his motion. He changed it. It's not like so much submarine. It is sidearm, but it's not that submarine thing that was putting a lot of torque on his elbow, which probably led to him getting hurt. Yeah, and to um, your point, by the way, when you're talking about relievers getting healthy and potentially returning just in time for October, these relievers are now fresh. And this reminds me a lot of Joe Kelly in that World Series championship that the Dodgers won. Yeah, Everyone complained about their bullpen. How are they going to get out? So are they going to go to Gratterall? Are they going to go to Kelly? They've got a lot of hard throwers, but none of them are reliable. But then they got to October and they got healthy and they made a run. So I can't rule out this bullpen, but I just don't necessarily feel like the guys who are currently in the building and healthy right now are guys I trust in October. Some of the guys who are outside, you know, on the IL right now, you know, maybe you can trust them. I shouldn't even say you can trust them. Maybe there's something to grow into there. There's some shoes to fill, but I, I just don't know about pitching in October in New York with guys who have something to prove in the back end of your bullpen. I, I'm just looking at something a little more steady. Maybe you go Fairbanks, right? Maybe you go Tanner Scott, who was an all-star this year. Um, I'm looking their direction, and I understand that it's a seller's market. Brian Cashman's going to really try to hit it home. It's a seller's market. But sometimes you got to lose value 
in your organization to win in the short term. I think that's the job at hand. No, that the, I I get what you're saying for sure, and I think you know, like for instance, Nick Birdie. This guy's always hurt. I'm not relying on Nick Birdie. You know what I mean? I'm just. I think I'm he's not. been hurt a couple times now. I mean, he yeah, he's been hurt like three times. Yeah, it's just crazy. Um, I wanted to bring up something about Fairbanks that I find that I, I didn't realize at first, which is why I haven't really talked about him as much. Um, but essentially, Fairbanks has Raynaud syndrome, which impacts the blood flow to the fingers and affects the grip of the ball, typically in cold weather. What? He, yeah, he was actually placed on IL with nerve-related issues, um, a flare-up of his Raynaud syndrome. So I saw that I don't I don't know who tweeted this out, but it's actually like a real thing. Like, okay, like it wasn't made up. So this um, is confirmed now. This is confirmed because he was placed on IL in April, back in April with nerve-related issues regarding this Raynaud syndrome. And I was thinking to myself, I really like this guy. I love his personality. I think he'd be great for the Yankees. But at the same time, I'm like, so it impacts the blood flow to his fingers and it affects his grip on the ball in cold weather. That doesn't sound like good October baseball type of pitcher. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't sound like he would be the move there. Okay. That no, because when we pitch in October, you know how you know it's a big game in New York when you can see people's breath. When you can you see someone's see breath, breath in October. When you see someone's breath at Yankee Stadium, you know it's a big game. I actually told my wife that. I was like, when you see the puff of air at Yankee Stadium, there is no better sight in baseball. It is that. Okay. You see guys wearing turtlenecks. By the way, I'm sitting here looking at these numbers from Fairbanks. Do you know the most innings he's thrown since 2022? 45. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, because in general, it, when you talk about like Loisaga, Holmes, all the guys, right, Batances, Britton, Chapman, all of those guys that the Yankees have utilized, specifically Girardi and Boone, both, all of them have been big inning guys, all of them. They've all been milked, milked like a cow. And when you bring in guys who don't necessarily have the pedigree to go out and do what you're, you're clearly going to use them to do, well, you don't get a Honda Accord and then drag race it down the street. You go get a Lamborghini. So oh, Boone, Fairbanks. Boone, Fairbanks. Clearly. Clearly, it, looking at those numbers. Now, if there's something that they're seeing that they feel like, you know what, it's kind of like the home situation in Pittsburgh, we see something that we can fix, great. But what is it about usage that you're going to fix? He's never been used the way you're clearly going to use him. So that worries me. I maybe steer clear of this, so I'm really glad you brought this to my attention and our attention, but isn't Tanner Scott the move? At this point, the way Tanner that this Scott market is, and Declan Cronin, because right, isn't the way this market is unfolding? Remember, the we're report. kind of in a corner, and sometimes the move you're like, "Well, I've got no choice yeah. but to make this move." Sometimes that's the right move, and that's the situation. You go get one bat, you go get a guy who has pedigree to close games at the end of the end of the game. And frankly, when you watch Tanner Scott play baseball, when you watch him pitch, it's not a stressful inning. He has an understanding of what he's doing. He's got feel. He's around the strike zone. And after watching Clay Holmes this past, I'd say two months, he he clearly has no idea where the ball is going. I understand the Yes broadcast is like super excited about his movement. And hell, yeah. like sometimes I'm really excited about the movement as well. Like we're up three or four runs against Boston a couple days ago. Yeah, the movement is fun to talk about. But in October, am I going to give two rippity doodahs that you have two feet of movement on your ball? I'm not, Jake. I'm going to care about executing pitches and then get off the mound. I need executing of a job. And then next we win game three. Okay. Can I trust you in game four to throw strikes? If the answer is no, well then Jake, I mean, I feel like a fool as a podcaster, not trying to push it to somebody else who can actually get that job done. No, I, I get that, man. I mean, I think the report came out. The Yankees want a left-handed guy and a right-handed reliever. And, and to oh, me, really? Yes, and, and to me, okay. Declan Cronin is also on uh, Miami. He's not having the best year. Like he's, th you know, he has a three forty ERA. But look, like this is somebody that you know has a slider, has a sinker. I I really feel like he throws his sinker forty one percent of the time. I feel like Matt Blake would be all of this guy, to be honest with you. And 
you are, aren't just getting him. This would be part of a package to go out and also get Tanner Scott. And by the way, I don't think the Yankees have a choice. I think they need to get Tanner Scott because if they don't get him, do you know who's getting him? The Orioles, 100%. The Orioles they are have the favorite to. right now to get him. Right, because of the whole Bautista development. And that's part of the reason why you look at these teams and you say, well, Baltimore, by the way, these next few hours when you watch the show, Baltimore has to get a starter, whether it's Flaherty, whether it's Scooble, right? Whether it's Blake yeah. Snell. They also need a reliever. Felix Bautista, out for the year. They need a closer. They're, Craig Kimbrell, if we play Baltimore in October, the Yankees would love to see Craig Kimbrell at the end of a game. The Houston Astros would right, love. Good to me. Yeah, the Houston Astros, who have gotten a lot better these past few days. Let's be clear about that. Houston they got your guy love. Kabuti. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is going to be a nightmare. You see, it's, it it's funny because Astros fans are complaining today about what they gave up. They don't really. Oh, who cares? They got him. We know why they got him. They got him because, keep in mind, who's been on the Astros' mind all year? The Yankees. They started off the season 0-4 because of the Yankees. Okay? They won one game against the Yankees this year. And rightfully so. They've been our they've essentially been our daddy for yeah. for years now. They've they've whether you give them credit or not, the Houston Astros are a formidable organization. They are. that has had our number. That's why and Reggie we Jackson need to answer that. that. Yep. As sad as that was. That was sad. Yep. Um with that said though, Kikuchi gives the Yankees fits. So, it makes a lot of sense. I texted you immediately. I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> I, I was like, Kabuti. I was like, oh no, he went to the Astros. You're like, no way. <laughs> it was the perfect move for Houston. I understand. Yeah. I totally get it because yeah. everyone looks at it and says, well, you just gave up a haul. But like I tweeted earlier today, today's prospects and stars that I guess you can call them star prospects, most of them, this is the overwhelming majority of the top 20 prospects. You're not going to see them hardly in a role in the major leagues more than a role player. You a lot of times these top prospects, you could tell me who's the eleventh prospect in all of baseball right now. That's somebody who would essentially net you anybody in the trade market, the number eleven overall guy, and that player more than likely you will not see him. That's just how baseball is. It's it's tough. It is tough to scout this whole thing because you don't know. A dude can throw one hundred and three miles an hour in college. You bring him up to the big leagues, and they're like, well. He couldn't develop his slider, and and so he just sits in double A. Then he starts selling insurance like a week later. Like that's that's literally how this works. Baseball is just a tough game to scout. This isn't the NFL where a dude's six five and has a sixty inch vertical, and you're like, well, he should be good, and then he just always is. This yeah. is not that. This is baseball. So um, tough job, and frankly, I think Houston, they're a more veteran team. They know that they want to just go win in twenty twenty four. Bregman, they might lose, right? They might lose a lot of guys. So Tucker's not resigned to a contract. They're a 2024 team, and that's kind of what I'm hoping the Yankees do. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Um, by the way, breaking news, the Braves are finalizing a deal to acquire Jorge Soler uh, from the Wow, Giants. really? Yep, so that uh, just came. Not Yankees news, but still news. That's pretty decent. Um, so uh, oh, so San Francisco the is definitely selling. Well, that, it, that I'm glad. See, context clues. So you, you and I think the same way. The first thing I thought is Blake Snell's available. 100%. Now, yep. like, you don't trade away Solaire, who was, by the way, like their big addition because Blake Snell was signed afterwards, right? But he was their big, you know, offseason acquisition. Blake Snell's available. So is Matt Chapman. Now, you had mentioned to me, like, that Chapman, you know, $20 million. Yankees probably aren't going to take that on. Do you think they take on the Blake Snell money though? No. Cuz I actually kind of think they would. Okay. Well, and I mean, the reason, they did take on 25 million dollars from Josh Donaldson, so why wouldn't they be available for a player reason, whose ERA is 1 right now in yeah, the I mean, four games he's pitched? The reason why I say that is because I think Blake Snell is opting out regardless. I think we all know that. Mm -hmm. And if you're going out and training for Blake Snell, you're essentially admitting that you probably should have signed him to begin with, but now it's like you really need him and you really feel like this team is going to win the World Series if you get him. And it's the Who same I think thing to trade with Crochet. Uh, I mean, the Orioles. There's two teams. So the Orioles obviously are a move that could anybody. happen. They don't they have, haven't. They don't have that much money out there being spent, so they could actually take him on for a year. Definitely. I just think in general, Baltimore is, they may be a little gun shy 
for my taste. Baltimore's never shown an they've never shown an over aggressiveness to acquire talent via the trade market. And that's my point. But the two teams who have shown an aggressiveness, I think mm. the New York Mets and the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers, the Dodgers just got rid of James Paxson inexplicably. Okay. Yeah, he was actually true. having a pretty decent year. They just DFA'd him like it was nothing. They just got rid of him. So they had out of nowhere. There must be some type of plan. I know they've said, well, we expect, you know, a couple guys to get healthy, like Glass now kind of getting closer, right? So these guys, it's like, that just doesn't seem like a good enough answer to me. It seems like the Dodgers, you would have never said, oh, yeah, the Dodgers are going to be in on Trey Turner and Max Scherzer both. That just doesn't make sense. And then long behold, they go do that. Manny Machado is available. They go get Manny Machado. The Dodgers just seemingly are always in win now mode, and especially a team that knows we're spending a lot of money already. We've got Otani on the books for $70 million. They can bring in a player that can help them win now, especially when you don't have Otani on the mound. And then he's gone next year. So you can potentially just go pry Blake Snell from San Francisco and potentially go win a World Series because now, based on what the Dodgers just did these last couple of days, they've got some depth now. And they're just waiting on bets and guys like Freeman to get healthy again. Yeah. And... um I don't know if you you knew this, but uh, our good friend Fran- Frankie Montas is headed to the Brewers. I did see this. That's yeah. uh, I'm glad because that means he's not coming back to the Yankees. I don't have to worry about that. No sweating there. Um, we saw the Jack Flaherty news. Obviously, people are gonna you know wanted us to talk about that. Um, Flaherty to me, I mean, he's just a rental. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Like he's not gonna be. A, he's he's for this run, um, but that's okay. Because guess what? Nestor Cortez is just a rental at this point. And if he is acquired, as our guy Bob Nightingale said in his report, Nestor Cortez would be traded. And if Nestor Cortez is traded, you could probably recoup a decent amount of what you'd be giving up for Jack Flaherty. So well, Jack Flaherty's pitching like an ace right now. Just to be it, clear, just so people understand, yeah. his ER is under three. If you look at his savant page, it's the same it, as Zach Wheeler right now, I think, right? It's 295. It's 295. But here's the interesting part about, about Flaherty. Right on the Flaherty. Dot. Yeah, normally Flaherty, when you look at his innings pitch and his Ks, they're about even. They Most years than not, that's what you see. This year has not been that. His slider this year has just been different. 106 and two-thirds innings pitched, right? So nothing he hasn't done. He's piled up innings before. This is a player who's dealt with injuries. 133 Ks. His whip is under one, Jake. Yeah. And he's so got this a, is, uh, this is, he's not the Holy Grail, but based on what he's doing this year in the short term, he's exactly what you want. It's, if we had gotten these numbers out of Rodon over the extended part of the season, we would be thrilled with that contract. $160 million. Yeah. You have a ERA under three. You're striking out, you know, two guys in inning. Yeah. I'm taking that. So, that's what he is right now. How much is Flaherty worth in this market? Probably a lot, Jake. Even though he's a rental, they're probably like, if you want him as a contender, Baltimore, you want him? Well, go send us some of your big prospects. It is what it is. Which, by to, by the way, to me, if you're going to offer like Spencer Jones and all those guys, I'm going after Crochet and I'm signing him. It's really that simple. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, think about this. Because I, I actually want this to turn into like a push here. Okay. I don't know where you are on it, but I don't think you can let a guy like Crochet go to the Orioles. I don't think you could let him go to the Dodgers because you might even face them in the World Series if you get there. Maybe even the Astros step up and try to get him. The point I'm making here is Crochet is an all star starting pitcher. Okay. And he needs a contract in order to pitch in the postseason. We talked about it. That's wild. But at the same time, Who's better than Crochet on this roster right now? Garrett Cole, because he's the reigning Cy Young winner. But currently, Crochet but nothing he's is doing. probably currently Crochet is probably the best pitcher on this roster. The moment he becomes a Yankee. So my point, Strowman is under contract next year. I'm aware of that. I think Strowman's getting traded in the offseason. I oh like 100 percent Unless he pitches really well in the postseason. I think it was always a one-year thing. Which definitely can happen. I mean, he has the pedigree to actually go out there and pitch big games. Yeah. He's done it before, and you didn't say he couldn't. No. But he's definitely not this. He's not. You're not throwing him the ball in game one of the World Series. That's just not. That's nonsense. Well, Unless, like, guys are hurt and there's no other options. 
Marcus Stroman is not a game one of the World Series type of talent, but the way that Flaherty's throwing this year, he's essentially a super two. That's the numbers that you're getting. Yeah. So if you want to go win a World Series, you might lose value. You might have to trade a prospect that you think is ridiculous to have to give up. You might have to send Spencer Jones, right? Baltimore might have to send one of their top five guys. And they're like, why would I have to give you a top five guy for a rental? Well, they say, well, then don't go win the World Series this year. Kiss, you know, kiss our behind. That's their answer. They don't have to trade you this player. Somebody usually is desperate enough to say, we have the balls to trade for this player and try this year. That's what this is. Okay. Flaherty is that. You mentioned Blake Snell. Blake Snell is not going to be a member of whatever team he gets traded to. He won't be more than likely on that team the following year. It is a rental. This is a risk. And sometimes, Jake, you have to have a general manager who can assess risk and do that correctly. We're in a position right now where Brian Cashman, he's got to go out there and figure out what's worth it, what's not. And his pedigree says we can't really trust him in those decisions. But like always, Jake, we're still in this situation. Whether or not he deserves to be there or not, we still have to live with his decision by tomorrow. It is what it is. And we're going to cover that. Yeah, absolutely. I think looking at the rotation, um, you know, I want to bring this up because I don't think people have noticed, but the lineup is starting to get younger. Like the Yankees are getting younger as a team. They went out and got Jazz. They called up Ben Rice. They have Austin Wells. They have Volpe. They're getting Dominguez younger. Dominguez coming. Dominguez. They're getting younger, which is good. This is what you want to see. If the Yankees can be really dominant and stay young, that's a good thing to have. Because you can have Aaron Judge who's in his 30s. That's no big deal. Marcus Stroman is 33 years old. He's actually the oldest pitcher in the rotation. And then you have Rodon, who's 31. And then you have Cole, who's 33. And, and, you know, obviously Marcus Stroman is 33. But then you have Nestor, who's 29. And he's, you know, contract year. And you have Nestor Cortez is 29. Nestor Cortez is 29 years old. He looks 35. (laughs) So Luis Heal is going to be 27 next June. That's great, right? We, We love that. But, like, my thing is, like, Garrett going out and getting Garrett Crochet gives you like a one two punch as like young guys, as far as I'm talking about. You oh, you definitely have a case is? there. You know how yeah. old Crochet is? Uh, is he 24? He's 25. Well, okay. Well, I mean, he's, he's still a young player. You can expect yeah. another nine years of prime, exactly. And so, I hate that word. I know you do. So, <laughs> Crochet extension, you have heel. You have Cole, Rodon, if he keeps pitching the way he does, and then Clark Schmidt next year. That's a great rotation. And you still have Poteet. Yeah, and you have Poteet, who, like, I'm totally fine with him pitching tomorrow. Like, I trust Poteet. No, he's a big league pitcher, and the broadcast has made that clear. He's a guy we can trust, and the Yankees actually did trust him before he got hurt. They just threw him six, seven innings. They didn't care. He just pitched against good teams. He was around the strike zone. If... Cody Poteet pitched next year and they told me, yeah, he's our four star. We're just going to trust in that. You think I'm worried if Garrett Crochet was in this rotation? I wouldn't worry about it. No. I just wouldn't. As long as you resign you, the big guys, right? Juan Soto, you bring in maybe an India or a Diaz, and Diaz is still under control. I, is he a rental, actually? Uh, is, so actually, Yandy Diaz. I don't know about that. Yeah, Yandy Diaz. Is he a rental? So I actually wanted to talk about that because we said uh, rental last time. He's actually not a rental. He's got two really? years of control. Oh, that's a huge. I mean, that's a huge now, difference. Keep in mind, though, it's not. So control is kind of overrated if you don't understand mm-hmm. what control is. Not talking to you just in general, because um, control is great for if you're young, right? And you haven't hit free agency yet. Yandy right. Diaz, okay, he is owed. 10 million next year and 12 okay. million club option the year after that could actually work pretty well. It's not a lot of money when you really think you're the New York Yankees. And if he continues to hit the way he's hitting right now, then I pay that, but that might deter another team, you know? So are the Yankees interested in that? I think so. I mean, they're, they're one of the three teams, but it does, you know, it's not the same as, like when we were talking about yesterday, Brenton Doyle, who's under control for four years and he's dirt cheap. Yeah, it's not that. This is a this is a player essentially in that Brett Gardner um, 
Alex Verdugo contract range where you're going to be anywhere between seven to 12 to $13 million a year. Yeah. And that's just what it is. But you also have to remember the Yankees are expecting how many people think Alex Verdugo is a Yankee next year. Probably not many. How many people, there are people who think that the Yankees between now and this next off season, that the Yankees are going to part ways with DJ LeMahieu. They'll probably pull the plug and say, you know, this age 37 season is just not going to work. Though. I it's don't a, know it's if they'll do it. He is going to be, you're not going to believe what he looks like next year. Oh, no, no, I will believe it because I told you he was going to look like this before the season started. <laughs> I mean, you did, but I, I mean, was, but good I'm Lord. just saying like, especially unless they like get rid of Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone is obsessed with him. Like, I mean, just the way he's like, oh my God, I got to bring it up. By the way, Jack Flaherty, in case you didn't know this, I am four days older than Jack Flaherty. <laughs> What are we doing with our lives? Sick <laughs> podcast. These guys are just like spinning the ball. Should we trade him to the Yankees or should he be a hero in Houston? And we're just sitting here just talking away on a pod. It's At so like crazy. Midnight. Eight million dollars. And he's he's probably <laughs> asleep now. Um no all, all jokes aside, I wanted to bring up something because and, and then you know we'll wrap the show because we don't want to go forever. But there was something I saw. Oh yeah, I, I yeah exactly. It was the freaking quote that. Oh my god, man! Are you talking about a quote from Boone about DJ Lemayhu? Yes, I'm trying to find it. I, I okay. So Max T Goodman at Max T Goodman on Twitter. Okay. Aaron Boone was asked about how Jazz Chisholm Jr.'s presence could change DJ Lemayhu's playing time. I don't know if I would have asked that question. I would have just hoped that like, don't. All right. Here's my message to reporters. Don't l remind Aaron Boone that DJ LeMay, who's on the roster, just stop talking about him. Hopefully he'll forget to put him in the lineup. Um, so this is how it was quote. We'll see baseball constantly is changing and throwing you curves. The bottom line is, I know I already see the face palm. The bottom line is DJ has been a great player and is still very much in the mix at all the infield spots. We'll see how it shakes out. What? Why? Why? DJ has been a great player. When? Like if you what? ask somebody, when was the last time he was a great player? Just a full stop. When was it? Like three years ago. Three years ago. Are you going to walk up to Gary Sheffield in the lobby of a Ritz Carlton and be like, he, he's, he was a great player, and then just start putting him in the lineup next year? No. Gary well, Sheffield is washed. He's a, he's a retired <laughs> baseball player. Okay, Say sorry so like, to your father. <laughs> yeah, but, but he would tell you, hey, Gary, can you go play for the, the Yankees in 2025? He would laugh, right? Yeah. Yes, you are a great player, and he knows oh, this, Gary. right? But things change. You I get older. The, I read the wrong quote. This is even worse. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Brian Hoke. Though Jazz Chisholm is at third base tonight, Aaron Boone said that DJ LeMahieu will continue to get opportunities, including on Wednesday versus a lefty. Quote, this guy is a great hitter. He's working through some things. You don't want to close the door on being able to unlock those things. He's working through what? Does he have gambling debt? He's not working through anything on the baseball field. <laughs> oh, He's not working God. on anything on the baseball field. DJ LeMahieu is not good at anything except for defense. He's yeah. good at defense. Yeah. I have never yeah. taken yeah. that away from him. Yeah. I've brought but, it up time yeah. and time again. He's not good at anything that has anything to do with a bat. He should just go up there and try to get hit by the ball. <laughs> Just go stand up there like what was it bad news bears where he's like go get hit by the ball and he goes yeah. in there and gets smoked that's yep. what has to happen there's nothing what after he swung nothing good can happen oh man come on funny. now and this and is then, a pro former professional athlete saying this just oh, nonsense and, and then last one here uh vi shout out to vi great viewer of ours um tweeted at me because I put out, okay, my Yankees trade deadline projection is this now. Tanner Scott, Declan Cronin, Yandy Diaz, and Ahmed Rosario. Rosario, of course, went to the Dodgers. Um, I'll take the one on, uh, on Chisholm, though. I I'll take that. I think we both earned that. But um, he commented, I'm hearing from a friend in the Miami front office that Tanner is probably going to Baltimore. They're waiting on the Yanks. Royals and two other teams to come out with better offers, but apparently they like the Orioles offer. They should definitely get a few relievers for Verdugo and Torres. Now I'm going to be honest with you. 
I've never been more convinced they're probably not trading any of those guys. I think the one guy they trade away that's on the active roster right now is Nestor Cortez. I'm convinced. Like, I agree with assume you. assume he's gone. Glaber, it, I, I do think his defense is playing himself off the roster. I really believe that. Verdugo's not getting traded. Because they like Verdugo's defense enough where he could be a defensive replacement in October, even if he gets to play in the lineup. And regardless, when he's on, he, he's a quality bat. So, look. He's just, he's, no, he's just not on very much. Yeah, we're not the biggest you know fans of his, which is a bummer because I liked him at the beginning of the year when he was actually hitting. And now he's hitting again, to be fair. We'll see how long it lasts. But I got to be honest. I think you know it's a flip of the coin with Torres. I think Cortez, if you have a, you know, Cortez, if you're a huge Cortez fan or you have a hoodie Cortez, whatever the hell your screen name is on Twitter. Those are the dumbest Twitter accounts that ever lived. Anytime you see hoodie, you just know know that person's mentally ill. (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) I don't know why. And they're 19 and stupid. (laughs) <laughs> Cortez is in their uh, their handle. Um, my point is, he's. I don't think he's going to be a Yankee much longer. And I do think... Part of me thinks they're going to get Flaherty. Part of me. Well, I mean, Flaherty is not a... That's not a bad play. No. And I don't think that the move in the rotation has to be an ace necessarily. It just needs to be a guy good enough where you can essentially delay... And you actually can rely on somebody and wait for Garrett Cole to return to form. If Garrett Cole doesn't return to form, who cares who we get? We're not winning a title. No, that's true. And I, I so mean, if I Garrett Cole doesn't pitch like Garrett Cole. We might as well just go pack our bags now. You might as well just fire up the trip to Cancun and be done with it. And I got to be honest, I like Cal Quantrill, especially because he barked at that one guy. Uh, <laughs> oh, my that? gosh. Yeah. 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 We can't say it here, though. No, we're not going to say it here. Uh, it was just go funny. And look it up. It's hilarious. He was actually drafted by the Yankees in the 2013 draft, by the way, um, which is kind of funny. He, of course, didn't actually sign with a team until the Padres in 2016. Point I'm making, he's got a 409 ERA, 1.33 whip. I'm not dying to go out and get him. I don't feel like they can just get anybody over Nestor Cortez. I don't want to take away from Nestor Cortez. I don't think he's a bad pitcher. But the point is, you're trying to win a World Series. You need an upgrade. An upgrade is Jack Flaherty. An upgrade is Tariq Skubal. An upgrade is Garrett Crochet. So hopefully they get one of those guys. I'm going to say Skubal is not in play. I feel like I they're, they're... It's yep. all fool's gold. I, I, don't, I don't buy that they're trying to trade him. But I, I do think Crochet... I think the Yankees would be willing to give him the contract. I really believe that. Um, because I think they look at their starting pitching and they're like, if we had him long term, like, okay, you know, we're gonna get Soto and that's gonna that's gonna be a lot of money. But Crochet's a young pitcher. It's not, you know, getting a 30 year old pitcher who has arm issues. Going out and getting Crochet right now makes a lot of sense. So, well, if you did go get Crochet, you can also make the argument that the mm-hmm. Yankees, after all, drafting all these pitchers, you you can throw a lot of these guys. You can throw a lot of them in trades. You don't really yeah. need it. You've got a young 25 year old. Yeah, you have a 25 year old guy who is going to be your two. I mean, Croch- Garrett Crochet would be our two next year. Like, once Garrett Cole returns to form, he would be our second best pitcher in the organization. So, having said this, yeah. you can easily say, well, the Yankees at that point, they can focus the rest of their energy on position players because the Yankees have struggled in that department. So, that's, that's where my head's at. I think the main concern right now, I know people really care about what's happening in the pen, but you can't win in October if you don't score. The Yankees have shown us this past week, when we score, we're winning. It's fun. It's enjoyable. We look like a championship team. We need more reinforcements to go out there and increase our opportunity to score. We can't just rely on this week and just ride high and do nothing at the deadline again. We have got to hit the ground running. And I think Brian Cashman has to be smart enough to know he's got to do something. He cannot possibly just tell me that his decision is to just wait on people's return. That's just, that's something he's done for six years running. I need more. No, I hear you. And there's there's plenty of guys. I mean, if they go out and get Jack Flaherty, they could also attach Matt Veerling to it. They could attach Dio Urshela to it. Um, the Tigers are selling. They're just not going to sell Scooble. So we'll see what ends up happening. Obviously, we get Hoppy Baez to be our bat boy. Well, apparently he's the hottest hitter in baseball right now. He keeps hitting home runs. So I don't, I don't know where it came from, but... Uh, did you see that? No, no, I haven't seen it. I know he's hitting terrible. 
he's hit like a bunch of home runs in a row or whatever. I, I don't know. I keep seeing him on my feed and people are like, oh my God. Yeah, no, I see it this week. I see it this week. Okay. Yeah. He, so he hit three home runs in the last four days. Yeah. He's hitting 178 this year. He was year. once a cover athlete. Yep. So was Jazz Chisholm. But he's going to actually, it's funny. Jazz Chisholm on the Yankees is going to be like the closest thing to being a cover athlete that he's ever been. That's the funniest thing. Because we talk think about it this like, way. He's hitting 178. What did what did Joey Gallo hit for the Yankees? 155. There you go. So it's essentially the same player. Like Joey Gallo, like he had a couple home runs for us. I know it didn't feel like it, 13, but he did. Yeah. Yeah, he hit 13 home runs. So it would be like watching Joey Gallo hit two homers in a game and then someone being like, well, he's hot now, isn't he? No. No, he is not. No. Well, Javi Baez is the most dismal contract in the league. Rodon, uh, not Rodon, um, Rendon is up there. Rendon is worse than Baez because Baez at least shows up to the yard to play. Oof. He does. I mean, and, and he can't, if I can literally I say that to straight find... to Rendon, you don't play. If you got to show up to the yard, I know you're hurt, but that's part of the job. Part of the requirement. I mean, it'd be like me signing a deal to go work at Cold Stone Creamery tomorrow. And then I keep telling the boss I've got the flu and I'm sick for three weeks in a row. How so valuable am I as an employee? Yeah. That's fire. Funny. You would fire me immediately. The boss would be like, you know what? This is just BS. Yeah. We're going to go in another Cold direction. Stone. Are you kidding me? I just had a milkshake and now I want ice cream. I'm really sorry about that. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's uh, that's going to do it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I know I'm going to get a flack for saying that at the end of the show. There's going to be somebody like, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I've gone Nick A30. I hardly ever curse now. Now that people complain, they, they're just going to change me. Yeah. Um, yeah, after a few years, you guys won't even recognize me. Yeah, well, hey, you know, it is what it is. But with that said... We appreciate you guys tuning in. Tomorrow's the trade deadline. Gary, we have no idea what our schedule will be. If the Yankees drop something, we'll try and get a video out right there. Yeah, we'll be there. here. Um, mm -hmm. But we don't know what the future holds. If Cashman does nothing, I will say this. Our video tomorrow is going to, like, if Cashman does nothing, I don't care if the Yankees go out and they win 20 to nothing against the Phillies. We are going to say something, and it's not We're going to We're going nuclear. Because they have to do something. Like, mm -hmm. yes, J Jazz Chisholm, that's great. There's still more to be done. This roster is not a World Series roster yet. It's not. So, you know, we'll see what I have a feeling great. something's going to happen between now and when people watch this podcast. That's just my take. Probably. You know what you know will probably happen is we're on a three-hour time difference. So it's going to happen at 6 a.m. And I'll be like, Gary, Gary. <laughs> And, you're just and I'm going to be, be just incapacitated dead asleep. And I'm only going to be up because it woke me up. And then I'm going to be like, all right, well, we can't record a thing. And no one is going to be up. Just kidding. All of our viewers are up at 6 a.m. for whatever reason. You guys are animals. But uh, yeah, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully we get something at the normal time of maybe 3 p.m. That gives you noon, 3 p.m. for me. I'll, I'll take that. Give me 9 a.m. Pacific. You give me 9 a.m. Pacific, I'll okay. get it done. Okay, so noon my time, 9, yep. 9, 9 a.m. Yep. Okay, cool. 9 a.m. All right, Cash, that's your schedule. Don't do it too early and don't do it too late. <laughs> Dude's in his sleeping bag right now. Anyway, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, be sure to follow us on all social media. Uh, obviously, me at JK Bogan, Gary at Gary Sheffield Jr., and Yankees Unloaded at Yankees Unloaded. But we'll see you guys tomorrow. And hopefully we see you guys quite a bit tomorrow. That would mean hopefully. a lot of moves happened. So, yep. And like this video. Tomorrow.